From, from a data standpoint, this is certainly something that we can continue to track. Uh, throughput is a common metric used across the state. It's actually on the student success scorecard. So it's something that we can look at. We can look at our success compared to other colleges right. as well to have some contextual comparisons. Um, related to the work, I, I think that our faculty in these disciplines are working really hard to better understand what our students are going through. And right now, we're really trying to evaluate those efforts to see what works and what doesn't. Um, or if it doesn't work, how might it be tweaked so that it could work better for students to increase these, the throughput percentage. And really, it's an issue right now, from my perspective, of scaling up. So that we're serving small numbers of students with these interventions. So how may we um, increase the access to these types of innovations for more students to oh, get them? Right, absolutely. And, and I don't mean to imply that there's not, that the work is not being done, because I know this is not a situation that's unique to Long Beach City College. This is a situation that we see across the state mm -hmm. in students that are uh, in basic skills. But I think that we as a district, and, and I you know, would hope that my colleagues on the board would agree that we need to have a conversation in terms of what can we do as the board to help you, the, you know, the faculty, to address this issue because, uh, again, uh, what, can, you know, what can be done so that we can improve those percentage rates so that students, because what we're talking about, you know, data, we're looking at numbers here, but in actuality, we're actually talking about individuals. We're actually talking about students that are enrolled and are attending our campus that actually need the support. So what can we do as a board to help you uh, to be successful. That's Trustee great. Archuleta, can I address that? Sure, absolutely. I think what we need to continue to do is to continue to support the faculty innovations, to provide the faculty with the resources that they need to be more innovative and to grow the innovations. And um, we are absolutely doing that in every way. I mean, the last four or five board presentations have been about you know, basic skills and the things that we're doing and the things that are working and scaling up. And some of that scaling up, of course, requires, you know, as you just heard from our reading faculty, some more computers in the classroom, those kinds of things. But we're having those conversations. And this year we spent $1.8 million in instructional equipment, about five times more than we spent last year to support the faculty based on their department plans to have the equipment that they need to better um, serve the students and to make them be successful. So we are and you are supporting us in those efforts by allowing us to do that with the resources that we have. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I know there are some wonderful things being done, especially uh, the presentation that we, as Jenny mentioned about the math department, which I know is one of the gatekeepers in math and the fact that we're doing uh, you know, uh, there is in innovation being done in the math re uh, department. That's great. So it would be also excellent if we could see it in other areas and, and definitely accelerating some of those courses so that students, I think students get discouraged when they think about, I have to go through these four courses in order to get to that degree applicable. So where we can accelerate, I would certainly, you know, encourage and support that. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Archuleta, if I can add one more thing to what uh, Dr. Long just mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, the college is going through uh, a process of developing a strategic plan. That's going to be the heart of planning going forward over the next six years. I think the board uh, has a chance and should weigh in on how aggressive that strategic plan is in achieving the outcomes that we want to achieve because the changes that we want to see um, will need a redesign of the way that we schedule, of the way that uh, we um, are set up, the way that we reach students. And it's really gonna take an enormous amount of resources uh, and effort over a sustained period of time. The strategic plan will give you that opportunity to look at it over the next six years and to ask the questions that you're asking and to ensure that we are making progress toward those goals. Okay, thank you. Other, other questions or comments from board members? Yeah, I, I, I'd just like to make one point. I, I know of programs in Northern California where they have tried to both condense uh, remedial programs. I know that it's, it's a philosophy here that we would like to eliminate as much remediation 
as possible. That's why we do alternative placement measures and whatnot. Um, and we can't right away obviously do that, but um, if you think about what Trustee Archuleta was saying, it's not just that they've got to get up four levels for classes to get into college, basically, but they have to sign up for the class. And rem remember who these students are. These are students that have lots of things going on in their lives. Uh, they may have transportation issues, they may have kid issues, they, I mean, all kinds of things. So they have to sign up, they have to take the class, they have to pass it. After they pass it, they have to re-enroll in the next one and all the way up to uh, college level. And though each of those is an exit point where they, we may lose them. And something may be going on in their life that means that they don't get from three to two or from two to one. Or, and all those, op, uh, those, th those are lost opportunities at that point through no, no inability to do things. And so to the extent that we can get our students to the point where they are enrolled in college classes, it's very, very important. Um, I know the things that we've been doing uh, have been successful in that. In fact, I talked to uh, um, uh, Eva Bag uh, just this last week about what happened when uh, we changed the way we enrolled um, African Americans in uh, English and when we started using uh, scores from college or, or, or grades from college uh, in one year from 2011 to 2012, we saw a 300% increase in those that were now enrolling. So we're, there's, a, there's a basket full of strategies that we're all working at to achieve the same goal and that's to get our students into college and through college and uh, I think this work is terrific and uh, you're to be commended for what it is that you're doing and keep it up. Okay, great. Um, okay, uh, let's... Um, I, I, I'd like to add something, Trustee Otto, <laughs> sure. if I may. Um, I'd like to also dovetail on Trustee Archuleta's uh, very valid points, um, and I'd like to suggest uh, that perhaps we need to take better care of our faculty and our staff and human infrastructure. Thank you. Um, I see a lot of signs. Um, I have to tell you, I love them. Pay equity, respect, and um, it's absolutely valid, and we'll, we'll be working on that. Thank you. Great. Thank you. We, we, we're now moving on to uh, Thank you, ladies. agenda item 2.2, the Triple CT 2016 Board of Directors election. The Triple CT Board, the California Community College Trustee Board, is an elected board where 21 representatives from throughout the state of California uh, uh, rep represent all more than 450 trustees. They have an annual election. The winners serve a three-year term. Um, uh, the way that we have traditionally done this is to have the board president make a recommendation, which isn't the final say, but uh, my recommendation at this point, because I am the first vice president of this board in, uh, in Sacramento and have sat on this board for uh, seven years now, um, is that there are, there are, how many candidates? Oh, geez. Let's count them, well done. Fifteen, 15 candidates for eight seats. Um, my rec there, there are six incumbents. Uh, the incumbents have from one to uh, a number of years of experience. And my recommendation is to uh, support the six incumbents that are there and then to add to that um, Kenneth Brown from the El Camino Community College District. Mr. Brown is uh, uh, an African-American physicist who sat on the board for a number of years and uh, uh, has been active at, to some extent at the statewide level. And Andra Hoffman from the Los Angeles Community College District. Uh, I know both of these individuals. She, uh, the LA Community College District is the largest community college district in the state, and yet they haven't had a representative on the trustee board for a long period of time. Yet. So those are my recommendations. Uh, and uh, to get it going, uh, I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Uh, uh, discussion? Uh, Trustee Otto, uh, President Otto, I'd like to thank you for uh, 
adding the two names, um, specifically Andra Hoffman, um, I know her, uh, and I know she'll be a great representation for that district and um, for our colleagues. Thank you. Any other discussion? This is an action item. Uh, can we have a roll call vote, please? Irma Archuleta. Aye. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Jeff Kellogg. Aye. Doug Otto. Aye. And Sunny Zia. Aye. Okay, thank you. Great. We move on to the consent agenda. Any 3.1, any item may be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately if a member of the Board of Trustees so requests. Are there any requests to remove items? Yes, uh, President Otto, uh, item 3.4. 3.4. Um, I'll make the motion. Make sorry. a motion then to approve the consent calendar. Wait, 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 wait. Give me just a second here. I, I had something that I thought I wanted to remove if I can find it. Um, it's right there, contract. Yeah. No, no, I'm not looking for 3.4. Oh. I'm looking for the one that I. What was it coming? Yeah, it, it was um, three. Oh, it's uh, CN22062.2, um, that is a... Um, 3.3? Pardon? 3.3. So 3.3, I see. Right, I'll make the motion to approve the consent calendar with the exception of item 3.3, 3.4 to be pulled for future, for further discussion. Second. Um, all in favor of approving the rest of the consent agenda say aye. 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 Oh. Don't we have to take a roll call? Yeah, actually, if it, well, I would, I. So we have to take a roll call vote. Of well, yeah, we, well, we, we don't have to, uh, but if, if, if you're telling me that we should, then we will. No, no. <laughs> she's saying that she's telling you you should. <laughs> Following our, our normal procedure. Yeah. Irma Archuleta. Aye. Virginia Baxter. Aye. Jeff Kellogg? Aye. Doug Otto? Aye. And Sunny Zia? Aye. We could have, okay. Uh, then item uh, 3.4. What about 3.3? 3 .3? What, we, we, we pulled 3.3 .3 and 3.4. We're gonna discuss 3.4 first. Oh. Um, just, to, I, I believe I sent my questions ahead of time, so um, I'm just going to reiterate it. Uh, all of these contract awards, um, I'd like to understand um, how, what was the process that l uh, led to the selection of these um, vendors or um, firms, uh, similar to the, it doesn't have to be an extensive background, similar to the background provided for the contract amendments. Um, if um, Vice President Gable or um, Superintendent Oakley can uh, provide a, um, some insight, I'd appreciate it. I'm sorry, so, we are, are we on 3.4? 3.4. Okay, because most of those are, are governmental entities. Is this the item you want right. to pull? So I will let uh, Vice President Gable comment on the contract with Civitas Learning. Uh, uh, the rest of these are agreements with um, are uh, small business development centers. Um, so uh, this is work that's done through the, um, uh, the SBA and the small business development centers to contract with other sites to run the small business development centers in those communities. Uh, so the process is identifying potential partners, vetting them through uh, SBA's process, and then awarding our contracts through our own contract award process. Okay, so uh, perhaps um, you can enlighten me. Um, is Lo Los Angeles Area Chamber of Commerce um, part of the SBA, or is that in a government entity, and how were those values selected? Is it a grant base? Um, and when you say your normal contracts uh, selection, so was, it, were, was there a pool of folks that we selected from? If you can give me some background on all of them, I'd appreciate it. The Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce runs the Bixel Exchange. The Bixel Exchange is funded through the Small Business Development Center to offer small business development uh, center services to the uh, downtown LA region. Mm -hmm. um, that process is, uh, and the qualifications for those um, service providers are part of the federal SBA, uh, SBDC program. 
what happens is when we identify partners, they contract with L Long Beach City College because we are the lead agency for uh, the LA, uh, Ventura, and Santa Barbara County region. Um, so we administer on behalf of the SBA, the Small Business Development Center program. Uh, and they follow our contracting process internally, but the actual contract itself, um, the qualifications for vendors, um, we follow SBA and, and the um, LA area SBA office guidelines. And if, I don't know, Luann, if you want to add any more to that. Yeah, I might be able to help clarify um, some of it. The SBA doesn't require technically that we do an RFP with the service centers that we contract with. We do that at the college's practice. The SBA has requirements for us as a lead center to take a look at criteria such as methodology, justification for distribution of um, service area resources, um, population distribution formulas. We have to adhere to that and demonstrate to them in our audits that when we do a contract with a, a satellite center that we are following those guidelines. Our RFP um, requires them to follow a certain set of guidelines too. Part of that requires metrics that are agreed to with the um, SBA district office in Los Angeles for the regional network. And so we take a look, we have eight service centers and we allocate funds to them based on their capability to be able to deliver what we project to be able to deliver on the metrics for what they're doing. Um, when we got the service, when we had the SBA contract um, in 2005, one of the service centers, El Camino, was in the former network with um, CSU Northridge, and that's been a very good performing center, so that's been in the center from the very beginning. The Bixel Exchange started as a specialty center because they focus on technology development, and we allocated um, a small amount of sums to them initially to see if they could provide services to small businesses for technology, and they did a good job with that, and so we put an RFP out for them. Um, we've had three or four centers, I think Pasadena, um, Laverne, um, Pacific Regional, had other people compete when the RF um, piece came out. Um, they, we selected the centers that we currently have right now. We have um, El Camino and two other centers that had no other um, competition when the RFP came out for their ability to pr contract with us. So this um, Civitas Learning, and I apologize if I'm mispronouncing the name, um, what is their, uh, it seems like w they were the subject matter expert, um, so did we just uh, select them without a competitive uh, procurement for that one? Wait a minute, we're, we're, we're now That's moving away yeah. from the small business development centers to this. It's all under one uh, con uh, item. Yeah, right, it's under the same item, but it's, it's not uh, about the small business development centers. Correct, is that, this yeah. is um, a uh, contract for um, technology service, and I can let Emory comment specifically okay. on Civitas. It's not part of the SBA. Okay, because you got me confused. You said all of them are, it, at least it was implied that all of them are through your SBA um, or SBDC. So this one is not then. Actually, all of the items that have to do with community college districts or service centers are together. I think there's seven of those. But this is also a contract award. And so it falls under the same category, but it doesn't have anything to do with the Small Business Development Center. I see, okay. So yes, um, if you could please help me understand how this um, consultant was uh, selected. It seems like there was an RFP, but um, they were chosen, it says it's chosen based on subject matter expert expertise. And um, can you help me understand that a little bit better? Yes, so we did do a competitive process with the RFP. We had three proposals that were received. Um, the entities were reviewed by a group of district employees, and then they were interviewed, and so Civitas was selected as the best vendor um, that would work with our current system because this is software that we're adding to our system, and so we're going to have to have integration uh, with the information we have in PeopleSoft going up into Civitas, and so they were selected uh, based upon their experience um, as well as the, the product that they provide. Okay, and was there any reason why we got such 
a limited pool of respondents. It's a very selective type of software. There's not a whole lot of entities out there that provide the predictive analytics that we're trying to bring in. It's a fairly, not really new, but I guess it's new to the education arena to try to do predictive analytics on, on data that we have. I see. And um, when you say it comes from the restricted general fund, is it, why is it, um, is this a uh, grant or is it, why is it restricted? Right, it's going to be uh, funded by some of our grants that we have. And what grant is that? Um, I think the Innovation Fund, um, it could be the GIF Fund, and then potentially Student Equity as well. So it's a co uh, compilation of all of them, or which is it? Or is it one over the other? It'll depend upon the fiscal year. This is okay. a three-year award, and so the current fiscal year is going to be funded by the Innovation Fund. Um, I think the anticipation is that the subsequent years will be funded through equity funds. I see. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. One second. Um, can, can, can you tell us what this will add to the way we look at our students and, and the way we run the college? What do predictive analytics do? to move us forward. <laughs> if. I'll be happy to chime in uh, <laughs> on that one. Um, uh, uh, Civitas Learning Solutions um, allows us to uh, take the data that we have on, on our students, on our, uh, much of the data that you see presented to you from Lauren and her team of researchers as well as uh, others who, who look at the data and allows us to really look at it um, in a number of different ways. Um, there are a couple of different modules that Civitas provides, one that just gives very easy to read data sort of in a dashboard setting, uh, allows administrators, department chairs, deans to look at what's going on in their area and quickly <coughs> identify uh, where some of the opportunities and challenges are. Um, uh, with with our students. It also allows us to um, uh, use predictive analytics to give us an idea of students as they take our courses, as they get certain grades, as they come to us from local high schools, gives us an idea of um, how, they are do how they're going to do in the future based on how they've done in the past. And it gives us a much more precise tool to help us make decisions on where to allocate resources, where to allocate effort, and helps us judge inter interventions a lot better um, uh, as we experiment and have a lot of pilots uh, on many of the, these interventions. We need a much more precise tool to understand if the money that we're putting behind these interventions is producing the results that we need to see happen. And Civitas is also used by um, many community colleges throughout the country, and um, uh, I'm happy that the team who was uh, reviewing these proposals spent a lot of time looking at these data tools and talking to other colleges who have had experience with them. Mm -hmm. and, and I know it was important to match well with PeopleSoft, which is our right. underlying software, but in addition to that, um, it ought to help us as we move forward with the educational master planning uh, and gives us a, a, some Spaniards in the toolkit, if you will, that uh, may uh, make our, our choices more, uh, be better, better predict what's going on. So uh, I think that's, that's the idea behind it. And uh, I know that in talking to the institutional effectiveness people, they're delighted to have uh, this kind of information to, to, to make decisions about what we're doing. Any other questions? That's uh, any. Right. All right. Uh, there's a there's a there is a motion. I'll make it one. Moved by to to approve three point four by Second. Trustee Kellogg. Seconded by Trustee Baxter. Um, we'll do a roll call vote, I guess. I'm trying to I'm trying to save time if I think it's Irma Archuleta. We'll go fast. Virginia Baxter? Aye. Jeff Kellogg? Aye. Doug Otto? Aye. And Sunny Zia? Aye. Um, okay, and on 3.3, 3, um, it was the contract with P2S Engineering, Inc. I don't have any problems with the contract, but I'd like 
to use this as an opportunity for, <clears throat> to, for you to explain to us what we're doing with regard to placing, <clears throat> excuse me, cameras, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, on our campuses and how, how this pro program's going. We've had that incident relatively recently uh, that was upsetting and uh, this is an opportunity to talk about that, some of the measures that we're taking, so. Uh, certainly, uh, I can give you some um, brief background if there's specific questions. I'm sure Vice President Gable can talk specifically about uh, the system itself that we're looking at implementing, but the bottom line is we have been talking about and looking at ways to improve uh, safety and security on campus. Um, we have been exploring the use of uh, a video camera security monitoring system for quite some time, uh, and uh, we are ready to move forward and uh, begin the implementation. This will allow us um, to at least have uh, access to areas of the campus and be able to record activity throughout uh, various areas of the campus, which will hopefully give us critical information should any more incidents occur um, and give our law enforcement uh, tools that they need to quickly respond. And also have a deterrent effect. Well, I one think. hopes, yes, uh, one hopes that cameras will deter. Mm -hmm. May I ask a question, sure. uh, President Otto? Uh, I appreciate you bringing this up and um, I didn't realize the connection. Um, is there going to be real-time monitoring or is it just a matter of archiving um, the um, shots uh, that these cameras are gonna take? Um? Uh, there is not real-time monitoring, but the cameras continuously record throughout the day 24-7. So if there's ever an incident, we can quickly find the location, see if there was a camera, uh, give that information to law enforcement. Um, and um, uh, Long Beach PD has also been working throughout the city to, to link many of the surveillance cameras and we will continue to work with them to ensure that um, they have access so that they can quickly respond to any incidents. And, and what's the response time for between uh, mm -hmm. finding out if there is an incident and with the law enforcement, do we know that? Well, that, that would depend on the incident. Um, um, the officers typically respond pretty quickly to any incident on campus and this would just provide them additional tools to follow up on any incident. And, and when do we expect the full rollout of this to be done? Do we, do we know yet? I know we're, we're getting started on it. It's probably not cheap to, to put all this stuff together, but is there, what's the plan? Vice President Gable? <laughs> Um, yes, and so we're still in the design phase of the project. We're getting close to coming to the end of the design phase, and then we are going to have to take it to DSA for their approval for some of the, some of the mountings. Some of the things that, that President... Depart Department of State Architects. Yes, thank you. Some of, uh, um, just for everyone's information, this is going to be over 700 cameras that we're going to have on both campuses. We, it will completely cover pretty much every inch of the exterior of both campuses, and it will cover all of the entrances to the buildings um, with facial recognition <laughs> capabilities on the entrances to the buildings and the entrances to the parking lots and parking structure. And so that way, if there is a major incident within a building, we will be able to uh, zoom in from the archived footage and get facial recognition or license plate recognition in those specific areas. It also includes the exterior restrooms where we'll be able to do facial recognition on those. The rest of the campus will just be general, general recognition on that. So it is a very extensive project. There will be cameras everywhere um, on the exterior of both campuses. And we are hoping that we, we will be able to go out to bid this summer with construction starting shortly thereafter, but it will be about a 15-month to 18-month project before they're, they're all completely up and running. Okay. Could I say something? Sure. Yeah. Um, I just want to say that this is something that's been very important to me, campus safety, and I'm glad that uh, the college is going in this direction. Mm -hmm. Kellogg. Just uh, who is um, 
Uh, where are the monitors, or where, where is the feeds leading to? Is it going to be a, uh, to the public safety building, or is it to Eloy Oakley's office? Is it, uh, where is this going? <laughs> <laughs> it'll it'll more than likely be going to the public safety building. What we are trying to do, and we're looking to see if there's a bid that we can piggyback on, is to use the same system that Long Beach PD is using, so that way the officers are used to the system and they don't have to learn something new for our campus from what they use for the entire city. So that's something that we're looking into and hope to be able to accomplish with, with our bidding guidelines um, that we're re required to follow. Any other uh, thoughts or comments on uh, this? I had asked that it be pulled so we could have this kind of discussion because I think that there's, uh, uh, what I've heard around campuses, people didn't know what was going on and I knew that this was on the agenda just for an approval on the consent calendar, but I thought people would appreciate knowing uh, what was going on with regard to cam cameras and campus safety. So I would entertain a motion to uh, approve. So uh, moved. 3.3. Second. Was it Trustee Zia that moved it? Yeah. Trustee Archuleta seconded it. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Irma Archuleta. Aye. Now for the roll call. Well, wait, wait a second. The purpose of the roll call is, so everybody's vote gets recorded. If it's unanimous, and everybody's vote is recorded. But then it won't list the names for me in the minutes, and oh, that's what we want to see. So this is a technical thing. This is a roll call vote. We'll have a conversation about this. 